cracked in tubs infiltrate a ring of dirty cops on today's Miami Vice. Over the Line was directed by Russ Mayberry and was written by Terry McDonald from a story idea by Scott Shepard and Robert Ward. We are getting very close to the end of the series, and there are increasing signs that Crockett and Tubbs are approaching the end of their journey. Tubbs and Crockett conduct surveillance on a dealer named Tommy T, played by Nashville's Ed Amatrudo, who is in the process of selling a whole lot of cocaine. Tubbs and Crockett move in to make the bust, but they're thwarted by an ice cream truck driver, who announces over his loudspeaker that the cops are closing in. Everyone flees, and Tommy T gets away. Meanwhile, Castillo meets with police captain Richard Highsmith, played by Robert Fields, who has grand political aspirations. Highsmith announces his plan to make punishing budget cuts to every single police department, which seems like a splendid way to lose the police officer vote. Tubbs and Crockett talk to Izzy, who is in the middle of his latest scam, selling sunscreen made from reptile secretions. We're more than two-thirds of the way through season five, and this is Izzy's first appearance this season. Welcome back, Iz. It's always good to see you. Izzy tells them the ice cream truck driver works for a dealer named Reginald Hawkins. So an undercover Crockett and Tubbs approach Hawkins at a nightclub and propose a business deal. The ice cream truck driver, whose name is Johnny and who is played by Hamburger Hill's Anthony Burrill, lies and tells Hawkins that Crockett and Tubbs, as Burnett and Cooper, ripped off Tommy T in the deal. Hawkins, who is played by John Galateo, kicks them out of the club. Outside, Tubbs and Crockett are apprehended by a horde of men in suits who hustle them into two separate cars and drive them to an undisclosed location. A shadowy figure tells them he's the head of a new group of rogue cops who are dedicated to taking down the criminals who can't be caught by traditional means. Johnny belongs to the group. He's been working to take down a Central American drug lord named Victor Escalante, and to do that, he doesn't want Vice arresting Tommy T or Hawkins too soon, which is why he's been ruining their cases. The shadowy man wants Tubbs and Crockett to join his vigilante group, but will give them time to think it over. Meanwhile, Hawkins and Johnny meet with Victor Escalante, who wants to buy a whole lot of weapons, including plastique, from them. Tubbs and Crockett are picked up again by the shadowy man and taken to a warehouse. They watch from afar as Johnny leads an armed raid on the warehouse and steals a bunch of weapons to sell to Victor Escalante. The shadowy man asks Crockett and Tubbs if they want want to join his gang, and they say, sure, why not? The shadowy man reveals himself to be a police officer named Walter Stevens, who is played by the new pope's Tomas Arana. Crockett and Tubbs, who are only pretending to be corrupt, secretly meet with Castillo in the middle of nowhere to brief him on the situation. Johnny is unsettled by the violent raid on the warehouse and is having second thoughts about working outside the law. Crockett, who is trying to win brownie points with Stevens, convinces Johnny he's doing the right thing, then feels pretty lousy about successfully talking a kid out of being a good cop. Stevens, Crockett, and Tubbs wait outside a home while Hawkins and an undercover Johnny negotiate to buy plastique. Two uniformed cops knock on the door, campaigning for Captain Highsmith's political campaign, and Hawkins panics and shoots them. Stevens warns Crockett not to interfere, so Crockett anonymously reports the shooting to the police. One of the police officers dies while the other is in critical condition. At the crime scene, Castillo blames himself for not busting the vigilante group immediately. An irate Captain Highsmith wants answers as to how this happened, and Castillo promises the assignment will be wrapped up quickly. Distraught about his role in the cop's murder, Johnny quits the group and Stevens has him killed. Hawkins and Escalante meet for the weapons sale and find themselves surrounded by Vice and by all of Stevens' vigilante group, including Crockett and Tubbs. Crockett and Tubbs manage to arrest Hawkins, Escalante, and most of the vigilantes. A messy shootout scorched to I'm Life by the fix ensues. Stevens tries to get away with some stolen cocaine, but Crockett stops him. Stevens offers to cut a deal and give Vice the name of the real head of his organization. At this, Highsmith pops up out of nowhere and kills Stevens, then insists to an incredulous Crockett that he just saved Crockett's life even though Stevens clearly posed no threat. The episode ends with Crockett watching a televised press conference where Highsmith talks about the successful mission. One thing season five has consistently done well is show how corruption has escalated in Miami despite Vice's attempts to contain it. We now see this corruption has spread to the highest reaches of the police. There's a sense of hopelessness that's always been in the background of Miami Vice, but as we head into this final stretch, it's become more and more pronounced. This isn't a great episode, but it's a good one for showing how Crockett, Tubbs, and Castillo are all reaching the end of what they can do as police officers. The secret society of police vigilantes could seem cartoonish, but it's handled pretty effectively. Stevens is an interesting character, well played by Tomas Arana. He's not a macho, dirty, hairy type. Instead, his outside-the-law approach is cold and cerebral. He's fine with collateral damage like the slain cop, as long as it serves what he views as the greater good. Overall, this is pretty nicely done, and I'm giving it a solid three flamingos. Next time, Crockett and Tubbs investigate the murders of concentration camp survivors. Join me then, and be sure to subscribe to my channel, and have a great week.